Welcome to Xbox Uncuts, episode 281. We're back this week for conversation about video games, news, discussion, politics, and everything crazy going on in the world, apparently. This week <laughs> I'm joined by Will. Welcome to the show, Will. Hello. Uh, hello, yes. thank you for having me. Yes, thank you for being here, sir. Uh, Steph is indisposed at just this moment, but he will be joining us soon. Hopefully. Yep. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Last, well, not last week, yesterday, I tried to host the show. We ended up with a myriad of issues, and it was just weird. So we ended up postponing the show a day, but we are back. And, uh, man, uh, I didn't, like, pregame stuff, like I pregamed everybody yesterday for the topics. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so are you up to date on what happened with Blizzard? Yeah, so, like, an esports player... Uh, I think he won, and then um, his he spoke out about uh, the Hong Kong protest, protests or whatever, and so uh, Blizzard punished him and took away his uh, prize money and I think it banned him for a year, which is ridiculous. Yes. Uh, so yeah, the, Blizzard is is very cowardly, and uh, they're a bunch of dickheads. <laughs> So, and that's being nice, you know. <laughs> yeah, I think you uh, you covered uh, covered most of it. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I I don't want this like to be a pile on show, but this is something where I mean, I, this sounds so cheesy, but as an American, freedom of speech means a lot. Yeah, and when we see an American company get into a political debate that is stifling speech. It just, it, it's like, no, fuck you. That's terrible. Exactly. Like, and it's, to my knowledge, she didn't say anything like evil or wrong. It was just in support of the independence of Hong Kong. And, like, not, you know. And if that's yeah. all it takes, that's, it's really, really sad and disheartening. Yeah. Yeah, um, but sort of basically suppressing his free speech just because. Um, they have interest in China, you know. I mean, China has interest in, in the company. So, I mean, I don't, even, I don't know what percentage they have interest in in, um, in Blizzard, but it shouldn't be that enough at all for them to like, to, for them to like, be able to, you know, to suppress somebody's freedom of speech. And you know, it wasn't even that like crazy. It was just like you know, very, uh, you know, no, it was kind of not, not that big of a deal what he said. So, I don't get it. All right. I was going to look for uh, one sec. Blizzard official. Here's the uh, a Blizzard's official statement to China. After being, of course, this is translated, so yeah, take it, take it with how you, how you want, but. We are very angered and disappointed at what happened at the event and do not condone it in any way. We also highly object to the spreading of personal political beliefs in this manner. Effective immediately, we banned the contestant from our events and terminated work with our broadcasters. We will always respect and defend the pride of our country. Which, they're talking about China. Yeah. It's just... I don't know. It's just, it's very, uh... It's fucked up. Fucked up. It's... The only real way to put it. Yeah, I think the hope is that this isn't becoming like a trend because the whole NBA thing as well, yeah. with China being you know disappointed them and stuff, whatever problem happened there. So it, that's what kind of makes it tricky because like any company that has um, uh, that China has any interest in, as far as like you know having a stake in it, like their stocks or investment, they're gonna be like on their toes, and you really don't want that because that's that's not. That has nothing to do with like business. It's like two separate things, but mm -hmm. you know, China will get offended by like anything. <laughs> and uh, the South the South Park thing was pretty awesome too. The creator of South Park, but creators, they had an awesome yeah reply as well to them. Like kind of a snarky, <laughs> on the note, like like on point reply to all that stuff, which is the way they sh it should be handled. Most American companies, yeah, like, like look. You, you... You can't, you know, have the Gestapo or the secret police coming around 
to another using another country's laws to silence yeah. the, you know exactly it's just wild yeah man but okay i will uh we'll table well there's there was a little bit more we were going to cover on that subject uh yeah, epic says you which is epic has, i think 10 cent has a 15 10 to 15 percent stock of or 12 or so i don't know they own some portion of epic yeah uh and they said they will not punish players for speaking about politics which is you know what good for them uh, if, if they actually hold true to their word uh, i am very happy that that's how they're going to approach it like <laughs> political belief should not stop you from competing in a tournament or mm -hmm. like, you know it's just yeah i mean they say that now hopefully yeah. they like i said you know hopefully they go through with it <laughs> yeah we could, we could only hope that they they're serious about what they say exactly all right uh, but it's also tim sweeney so take that yeah. with a grain of salt <laughs> He's been known to backtrack and contradict himself and say dumb stuff. And to put a cherry on this little cake, uh, Hong Kong protesters are trying to get Overwatch banned in China by using <laughs> May. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> and a bunch of different uh, pictures. Uh, May, if you do not know, is the Chinese character in Overwatch. And yeah. like I posted a picture in chat of May being uh, with like a Hong Kong, like a free Hong Kong umbrella <laughs> and a few different things. Yeah. So it's pretty funny. Yeah. But it's a nice use of it. Yeah. But, <laughs> yeah, Blizzard kind of stepped in it really badly and I hate to say you you know, you can't you just can't do that. You're gonna piss Was off it? your fan base. <laughs> You know, also reminds me of remember that the whole debacle with uh, uh, Sony and uh, the Korean government with the uh, the was it that movie the interrogation thing is called? Oh, you talked about uh, no, oh wait, what? no, no it's not, uh, not interrogation. Um, it's not the word. Uh, it's the one with James Franco and uh, yeah. Uh, I know Seth exactly Logan. what you're about the interview. I'm sorry, yeah, the that's, I think yeah. that's the one. Yeah, so that was a similar thing, and it, at the time, I think Obama was like disappointed and. and them pulling the um because i know they pulled the the, the movie from theaters because they don't want to be like i don't know i guess uh the target of korean north korean um uh, backlash yeah yeah backlash or retaliation so it, it has uh, like a lot of like similarities to that in some ways and uh yeah man you gotta you know fight for your rights to say what you what you want you know yeah. don't uh, buckle to foreign interests just because you know they invested something in a company that has nothing to do with free speech even if you offend them that still has none you don't you're not going to get charged by the law bar for any of that stuff yeah and then it can't really do anything to you you know besides pulling out and if they do like who fuck cares like you know at least you have pride you know yeah. just have some pride man have some balls <laughs> standing up to yourself yeah blizzard and i mean love or hate trump he has put a spotlight on china and mm. Maybe it's it's time for us to do that. Like, it's it's time to kind of put down our quote. cheap iPhones and <laughs> go. Hey, you know, we gotta we gotta have, like as uh, South Park quoted, we gotta have some integrity. <laughs> Good old integrity. Exactly. Integrity farms. Yeah, exactly. Integrity. That's that's the right word. Yeah, I mean South Park's making fun of the idea of that because it's it's these giant corporations now saying they need mm. integrity and so, they're caving to essentially the Chinese pocket book. Exactly. So, it's not what it's, we uh it's not what our freedoms are for. Nope. Not what you know, that's not what the our troops are fighting for. <laughs> nope. <clears throat> so Yeah man. Well, I mean, yes, both both Will and I both understand that people in China aren't American citizens and doesn't mean yeah. we you know support those acts like yeah we 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 understand we're blessed that we have a good thing going on here like yeah do. exactly it's because we can sit here on mixer or youtube or twitch or whatever network we feel like broadcasting on and say what we want for the most part like, yeah and not yeah. without repercussions yeah like yeah, it's, and it's our, nice yeah 
Yeah, in our good old pirate radio station right right now. Yep. <laughs> where's where we're broadcasting from? <laughs> yes. Yeah. The a ship off. Yeah, a ship off the coast of uh, the Atlantic. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Which brings us to the DC part of the week now. Oh. <laughs> Are we doing that? Are we doing that this week? I, or, I, or? I, I don't know. I, 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 I don't really have anybody. Right. Yeah, I mean, I guess if we, you know, we run out of somebody stuff. random, we could bullshit one through. I know we can't. <laughs> it's not even bullshitting because we already know the characters very well. So, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's up to you. I mean, you want to do the news first and then. Oh, no, no, no. We'll go through the news. I was just making a joke. Yeah, good. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no let's problem. see. Next, uh, next bit of news we have. On a lighter note, Apple is now selling Xbox One controllers to push arcade services on iOS 13. It's just funny to see. I know uh, yeah. we've talked about how I forgot what brand because Apple does sell a controller. Yeah, they they do it from a third party, but to see that it's just like you know what, Microsoft made the perfect controller. Like it's the one yeah. people know. It's the one people. You can sit there and argue about PlayStation or Xbox controllers, but at the end of the day, like the Microsoft's, the Xbox controller is kind of the de facto PC controller, like, and it's yeah. the de facto uh, controller for mobile. I mean, honestly, like I've yeah. been able to hook up my Xbox controller to my 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 uh, Note Eight and play The Wolf Among Us using an Xbox controller. It's just wild. That's cool. Yeah. Crazy times we're living in, man. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. But that's Infinity only for the games. That's... Oh, says, sorry. hey, guys. Hey, what's, what's up, up Finny Lion? What's up, Josh? For being here. How you doing, man? Finny Lion, I did not forget about you. One day we will play Sea of Thieves. I'm telling you. <laughs> Soon. That's right. I, I just hit Athena 10, by the way. We'll talk about that later. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. All right, let's see. Uh, Civilization Six will have cloud saves between Xbox and. Well, let me put it this way: it will have cloud saves on every platform except PlayStation. <laughs> it's because they charge you for that, right? I I don't know. Maybe. I think they charge for cloud saves. Is that I, why I they're, they're, they're banning it? I mean, I understand that they ban cloud saves, but is do you think that's why? Yeah, because I know PlayStation um, Plus is the only way you can get cloud saves, and I think they charge you for that if you don't have one, which is weird. So I guess that might explain it. Infinity Line says he will not be able to watch the show live today, but he'll catch it at work tomorrow. Thank you, sir. Oh, yeah, thanks. Stop by, though, anyway. Always appreciate your patronage, sir. He and, says, uh, all good. I've been wanting to play Dustin, but Destiny has been taking my time. I understand. <laughs> I understand. You got yeah, that yeah. Destiny itch. It's a good game. Yeah, yeah. Like, perfect time to play it, you know, with all the uh I think they're resetting like all the levels and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Well not resetting, but I think they're just making well, it they're even bringing everybody up, yeah. Yeah, exactly. That way you don't feel oh, like you've lost yeah. anything. Yeah, exactly. Oh, I was also gonna ask about the the, the controller with the Apple uh stuff, the Xbox controller. Mm-hmm. So it only works with the uh, supported games, right? It's not for like every game. Like if it's a touch no, game. No, but they did build it on the the system level to support Xbox controllers. So it's like any game can now just do it. Because originally, like Android games would just work. Like you could just put it in there and an Android game would use an Xbox controller. But like no matter mm-hmm. what the game did originally, could not use an Xbox controller. You could never connect one to the other from oh, iOS. Interesting. So they might, or Sony, ugh, not Microsoft, not Sony, Apple is the mm-hmm. one that put the, the, essentially the drivers in iOS 13 to allow you to connect to an Xbox controller. So, oh, that's cool. Yeah. It's, it's also hope Android. Is, oh. oh, sorry. I mean, I hope Android can do that too. I mean, are, are they able to, or not yet, right? What do you mean? Android's already done it. It's been done. Oh, yeah. It's done. So oh, okay. I'll have to try that then. We're already there. So I play Mar- Marvel Future Fight. I know it has like virtual controls, like virtual sticks, but I don't know if that'll work with the controller. I have to. Have to it might. Have to see. Uh, I know like most emulators that you can get on Android also allow you to just plug right into an Xbox controller and let you play. Hmm. Yeah. It's a. Uh, it's just through only through Bluetooth. Right? Yeah, you need Bluetooth controllers. Yes. Interesting. All right, I'll, I'm gonna try it out tonight. I'm gonna see if I can make that work. 
Yeah, like I said, yeah, because the, the hooking up part's easy. It's just if the game supports it. Yeah, exactly. So we'll see. All right, I wanted to open up this next article because I... Okay, so Microsoft is introducing app and game limits for family sharing. So Microsoft's trying to stop kids from... What is it? Going around all these parental features. Uh, let's see. So, but they'll allow you to monitor and see exactly how much of what your kid's playing and actually add limits to Netflix, like Edge, Arc, and you can decide, like, hey, you know, let's cut this down. And it's just essentially revamping their family settings. Hmm, that's cool. I thought they were just adding like another layer of like parental control, but I guess they're just kind of readjusting it. Yeah. I mean, you can actually see, I'm looking on Microsoft's website, like you, it'll give you charts of how many hours they played of like ARC, like on Monday or Tuesday, and like just tell you everything about what they were doing on the console at the time. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. <coughs> Yeah, so it's, it's like I guess like a like a tr like a stat tracking type of system. Yeah, that's good. But like you can have a daily limit of one hour from nine a.m. to six p.m. for like Arc specifically, or like Roblox, or you know you can schedule those times. So even that way, it doesn't kill the functionality of the console. But it's like, hey, if you want to play solitaire, whenever you want. But you know, yeah, these are yeah, these are great features for like. Uh for parents because you know kids sometimes just stay on all the time they don't <laughs> want to do anything else but just game so yeah. it gives you a good flexibility to give them uh, just the, the amount of time that you want to give them it says you, you'll also make it easier to set up a child account on xbox one you now only need to add your e-signature to provide con consent for your child to have a microsoft account credit cards are no longer required for verification oh, that's another good one yeah like, so it's nice to see that even at the end of the generation, they're still revamping all the stuff on Xbox One. Um, <coughs> Sorry. Making it better and easier for parents. Because I know sometimes I need a limit. Hey, uh, update. Sea of Thieves. I, I should have put a limit on myself. <laughs> should have put a limit on myself. <laughs> all right. It's another good one. But, uh, yeah, so have they said when they're going to put the new UI? Uh update i don't think they've said exactly i know i'm in the preview no, no i can't talk about it like i've been yeah. like brought in and out of it mm -hmm. over and over a couple times so like into the new ui and back to the old ui and back to the new one so and i'm in the beta ring so it's hopefully it's soon because it yeah. does run a lot better uh than yeah i feel like it should be soon Because it's it's been in beta, it's been in preview for like at least uh, like a month or so, right? Yeah. So Microsoft. I mean, oh, oh, okay. Uh, sorry. Yeah. Well, I was gonna just say one more thing. I, I think we did get we did get an update this week as well for the uh, for I think extra features. I think one of them is like uh, your wish list gets uh, notifications if it goes on sale. And, oh, that's uh, cool. Yeah. That's a cool feature. I think they, I think they removed Cortana, and then they added uh, other voice features. Uh, I have to look it up. Though. I have to see what the list is. So I guess while you're looking at the story, I'll uh, look that one up. Okay. Uh, so Xbox dominated game industry TV uh, commercial spending essentially for September. Uh, it's not a very surprising thing. You know, Gears just came out. Of course, they're going to be tossing tons of advertisements but they beat out like 2k ea nintendo activision and everybody else on that matter like they they, they were 63.4 percent of the video game ads for september um, yeah, that's impressive yeah and, and for all the shit we give them for uh not advertising enough they, they do spend like day and date release apparently on a ton of advertising <laughs> uh, yeah I, I think I'm with Will. I'd say uh, let's spread this out maybe a couple months before a game comes out, maybe. Like, uh, maybe a month before. Thanks. Will? Uh, did you say something? Yeah, sorry. It looks. Cause that's, no, it's okay. Like, I don't know. For some reason, uh, the score is like freaking cutting off. 
some stuff. It's weird. Um, so, yeah, what was it talking about? <laughs> Sorry, I forgot. I know. I was just saying it'd be nice if they advertised during like a month before a game released. For yeah, first, yeah. Uh, all in the like, same month. <laughs> I know. Do you, do you think you know what caused that? Was it the Gears plus like Game Pass plus like. Uh... I imagine so. Right, yeah. Honestly. Yeah, because they went they went hard on Game Pass for a while. I mean, they still are, and, but it makes sense why yeah. they are. But it's watching people come and do the doom and gloom because Game Pass sales is funny, though. I will admit that <laughs> it's fucking hilarious. It's like, man, Gears didn't sell as well as they wanted it to. It's like, it, it probably did. They got a lot of Game Pass subscriptions out of it. It's like, <laughs> yeah. That, they, they knew what they were doing. Like, it's not like a, a secret. You, no. You literally had a dollar fucking... Two, no, no. Two dollars for two bucks Game Pass description day and date with Gears 5, essentially. Like... Yeah, they, spe- they specifically set it up that way, targeting. so... Yeah. yeah, it's almost like, you know, these games are like sacrificial lambs just so you can get the, the subs up. I mean, but... I mean, if, if, the, if it does to their expectations, then... You know, I guess you, you, you can't really For complain too much. Yeah. yeah. I just hope the game uh, gets more revenue from, like, you know, whatever. Uh, it looks like the, the micro. I mean, don't get me wrong. Like, it does, it's not pay to win, but the microtransactions, I feel, are a little steep in this latest right. year's game. Uh, I'm not a fan, honestly, at all. Yeah, me either. I'd, I'd well, honestly like... would rather them bring back Gears 4's packs. I prefer that yeah. over this. Yeah, those are a lot better. And plus, like, the customization felt, like, a little bit more fleshed out. I feel like they had more content at day one compared to now. I guess, there, I mean, there was always there's so much time left, you know, for them to add more stuff. But yeah, I still haven't seen as much of the content as they used to have before when they were first starting out. It just surprises me, to be honest. Like, it's... Because... It, when I played Gears 4, I played a ton of Horde. I mean, mm. a metric ton of Horde. I recall. <laughs> I think I've played maybe two matches in Gears 5. I've played more arcade multiplayer than I have a Horde. Yeah. I've played more Escape, and I've played maybe three rounds of Escape than I have Horde. Yeah, I do like Escape a lot. That's like that's actually one of the modes that keeps me coming back to the game, uh, outside of like campaign. Um, and higher difficulties, but yeah, I feel like um, I mean they just have to add more stuff to the to the you know what do you call it the escape mode because I feel like it needs more characters maybe like yeah more maps right away. I'm with but uh, yeah, the maps seem like they feel very similar even though they're like different. I don't know they have like just the way they're connected. I guess I don't know it's the way the layout the way the layout is. Um, but yeah, I, I hope they. They fixed that economy, uh, so so won't be so bad. I mean, uh, the game is like it has a good direction, but there's still a bunch of things they have to fix. And plus, they also um, today on Twitter they're like uh, a few. We had talked about this earlier, but they're saying if you quit uh, multiplayer like too many times, or whatever, they'll ban you for a year. Well, and, it's, uh, they, it, okay. Let me read it because I pulled it up because I was curious. Yeah. Give me, give me yeah, one you... second to do this. Never know. Uh, all right, let's see. Quitters have been. Let me restate. Quitters have been receiving month to year long suspensions for prior behavior. This is how long you can be suspended for being a rampant quitter. Take heed. Over the next few hours, impacted users will be unsuspended, but one quit away from suspension. You have been warned. That was five hours ago. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's just, I don't know. Like, it's, they need to, like, have clear guidelines of, like, yeah. what's acceptable, what's the acceptable amount of quitting, or what's the acceptable amount of, and I, I get, I get it. You're, it's never acceptable to quit. And I've never quit a gears can or multiplayer rank game. Never done mm-hmm. it, unless you count arcade. I think I might have backed out of one arcade because I accidentally hit A and yeah. went into the next match and I didn't feel like playing. 
Hmm. Like, it just... I don't, I don't know. Like, the, there needs to be maybe, like, a bar that's like, hey, you're, you're on your limit. Like, you, you quit out, like, three times this week. Like, this is, like, excessive. It's time for you to uh, pay attention. Yeah. Be it, suspended. It, like. Yeah, and I wish I had some sort of system that lets you know if some person, like, actually backed out, like, press B or, or, or you know, press start and, you know, got out. Or if it was just an actual, like, disconnect. Yeah. I guess it's hard to hard to set that up, but I, I think this, it's a little severe for, as far as just like punishing quitters. I mean, I get it. I mean, you have to have something in place to prevent them from doing that. But yeah, I feel like that's a bit much. I, feel I think like a, a year, year is way too much. Like three months yeah. max is what it should be. Like, hey, we banned for three months. Don't fucking quit like that. And then even at the, the end of that three months, you should only have like maybe two quits a week or something. And yeah, yeah. Suspend you again for another month. Yeah, it's because you're paying you're paying for live, and it's it's a system within the system. So it's like, you know, you shouldn't you shouldn't have to pay serious penalties for something that might not even be your fault. Yeah, like I said, there should just be a some kind of widget in the lobby when, and it doesn't even have to be displayed unless you start quitting, like mm -hmm. often, and then it just right. pops up and it's like, hey, you, you reached, you know, you and it, you don't even have to call it quitting. Just say you've reached your disconnects for the week. Like, if you get disconnected from the game one more time, you will not be able to play ranked multiplayer for another month. Hey, here's a yeah. quick list. Here, and then you can put an ad for fucking. Here's a quick list of routers if you're having router issues. <laughs> like, you know, yeah. fucking anything other than like, hey, we know you're fucking quitting. You're banned for a year. <laughs> Fuck you. Like, welcome to gears. <laughs> Like, eh, <laughs> it's a shitty message. <laughs> and I yeah, know they're dealing with a lot more players because they're dealing with, like, all these PC players as well. So I know that's a, another layer of complication versus, like, being able to see if somebody hit the guide button and quit out of the game. Right. So Yeah, I agree. I, I, think, so. No. I think, yeah, just track the account, put a meter up if they start quitting too much, and then, you know, then suspend. Maximum three months. Like, I think that's fair. Like, the idea that you're going to suspend somebody for a year is kind of ridiculous. All right. Let's yeah. See. Okay. Ooh, or, uh, you got more to add? What's up? Yeah, well, this so the uh, update that came through the, the one we were talking about. Uh, so the one that you were talking about with the parental controls, uh, mm -hmm. I think that was, that was definitely part of it. And then also the wish list notifications. Um... So yeah, so so I'm looking at the blog post here. It says uh, app and game limits for family settings, which which you had brought up. Mm -hmm. um, wish list notifications, a mixture of viewing improvements, so the integration is better. Uh, let's see. So yeah, it looks like there's a dedicated chat button and stuff like that instead of just going through just mixers UI. Uh, recommend an Xbox Game Pass title. Uh, recent players. Improvements to recent players' experience, making it more service more reliable. Only you connect to the gamers you play with instantly. So I don't I don't know exactly what they added that to that, but it looks like they just made it a little easier. Uh, under the hood game improvements. Uh, let's see. So you said we've added improvements to automatic game updates, so significantly reducing when you encounter the update required screen. Which yeah, that's a big one because that's that's uh I always look for updates. When I come home from work, and then it takes a long time. So you, this is good. Uh, this is events app. Uh, so it's, it looks like they they install an event app, so you can see what what's going on with gaming events with Xbox and communities. Uh, more flexible capture settings and capture and share experiment. Uh, let's see the allow game capture setting now has multiple options. Giving you more control of your game capture experience. Yeah, so there's, uh, so I think that's pretty much it. I mean, it's a decent, it's a pretty good update. I mean, it, it wasn't like I, I would prefer to have the new UI by now, <laughs> but this works good as well. So you know, definitely update your, your console if you don't have it. It's yes. worthwhile features. Yep. All right, and for the sombering news of the week. 
Or no, wait, you're not there yet. <laughs> Microsoft patents. <laughs> foreshadowing, people, foreshadowing. Uh, Microsoft <laughs> patents VR, matte, motion controller, and stylus possibly for Xbox. Uh, just be possibly for anything because Microsoft patents a lot of stuff. They do a lot of research in VR. Uh, mm-hmm. But it is interesting, the idea of a, a full-on mat to track, uh, help track location, feel. Yeah. I'm curious how... I'm curious if you could make a mat with texture. You know what I mean? Like, if you could change it. A mechanical mat. Uh, or some... It could, like, if you could simulate being on a slippery surface. Not... Don't uh, not super slippery, but yeah. something more slippery versus like being able to add ridges to it to make it feel like you're standing on, I don't know, something much more stable. I could see that really adding to the immersion of a VR system. Yeah, that'd be interesting. Like something that simulates kind of like sand. Yeah, well, not speci- yeah, a little bit. But something just to give you different grips on to your feet because you know we're used to being able to feel stuff through our shoes and like it doesn't have to be like direct like don't get me wrong if you put your foot on this mat you're going to tell that you're standing on a piece of plastic i would imagine it's not going (laughs) to be the same as if you know you were standing on an actual surface but if they could simulate some form of like texture on a mat just so it feels correct when you're walking on it Mm -hmm. it'd just be really cool yeah, that'd be interesting. I guess they'd have to like uh, create some um, modular mat that can change like uh, its shapes or whatever. I don't know. Yeah. It sounds it's like the Batman thing, you know? Just add electrical charge, it puffs up. Yeah, so, uh, <laughs> comes pretty. Yeah, that'd be uh, cool. But the the motion controller, the stylus. I mean, that's yeah, it's been done a million times, so it's not really you know. Yeah, it's going to be a motion controller, a stylus. We'll, yeah, we'll see, you know, like, we'll... I thought the map was interesting, but the rest of it's kind of like, yeah, heard of it, seen it. Yeah, hopefully when they reveal, like, Scarlet, they can actually show off maybe the, its VR capabilities. So that'd be that'd be pretty cool. Then that's a, a big request. I mean, they, they kind of promised it, but they didn't deliver it with the X. They said they would have it, but then they kind of backtracked on it. So mm-hmm. it'd be nice to have that option now with the Scarlet. And it'll be working actually probably a lot better because it's a lot higher fidelity. Yeah, definitely. I I, did, I don't want to see... Uh, well, I, I was never the biggest fan of the idea on VR on any console this generation. They're just mm-hmm. I've tried PlayStation VR. It's it's okay at best. Like it's you, you just need more power to do it at the end of the day. Yeah. Yeah, definitely now is the perfect time to implement that and make it up to the people who they were disappointed and not having vr with the x yeah or you know so yeah all right well now to the somber news mike Ibera is leaving mm. team xbox after 20 years sadly this man has been in our heard us talk on the podcast he's joined our channel a couple times on mixer yeah he's a really cool dude he, he's known to skip every cut scene in the world in every game <laughs> Uh, (laughs) but uh, he has not said what he's off to go do yet but he said he will update everybody soon it sounds like he's going to be in the gaming industry for sure Uh, and it sounds like it's going to be more for helping like he alluded to I would say to helping everybody to be able to enjoy games so I imagine maybe he's you know maybe the connect or the Xbox adaptive controller approach maybe yeah. in a field like that to help more people. I mean you know he, he's going to branch out after twenty years you know did that Microsoft run? Yeah, yeah it but, sucks man he's a he's a nice guy like I, I I didn't always agree with him with everything he uh, and he I feel like he said some weird things sometimes but other than that he's he's, he's always been a supporter of like many shows he, he's yeah like you said he's been in the chat of our show uh very you know participatory like he, he participates uh, oh, I forgot the name <laughs> he, he is all about bringing the community together like he's yeah, never exactly. been like we can just dis- of course like you said we can disagree with decisions or whatever but he's always been pro gamer from day yeah one. like he's never like tried to keep anybody down or like he, he's he's always tried to build everybody up off his shoulders to give him, give them a great game experience. Like, 
he's a cool it's definitely a cool guy and it's sad to see yeah him go. yeah i agree like he's often been more uh pro consumer than like than just to being a like a corporate guy which is cool that's why you know he's always promoting like cross play and yeah. you know cro- uh you know just playing with the uh, PC. I mean, not one a PC, but playing with like against the PlayStation players and mm-hmm. all that stuff. And I think he was also one of the people behind the backwards compatibility program. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Very technically minded. Uh, so he's, he's going to be a big, he's going to leave a big hole. Um, I mean, I don't know. It's weird. I, I guess he, he was moved in certain positions that just didn't really maybe play to his strengths, maybe. Uh, I mean, that's what I'm guessing why he quit. Um, because he was he's in charge of like was it mixer or something like that or entertainment? He's yeah. a VP of uh, what was it? But I also think I mean after when he hit his twenty years, most a lot of people at Microsoft after their twenty years retire to move on to other careers because mm-hmm. stock options change stuff like that where it's like yeah you know it's kind of have your pension time to go and do something more more of a you know meaningful project to yourself like it's time to go find something else yeah it just sucks because like he was yeah oh go ahead well yeah like you said it just sucks he was such a big part of the the community like he like as far as just like um speaking to fans and you know it was kind of like more he's the most uh down to earth of all i mean uh, phil spencer's cool but he was more uh like Phil, said, Spencer, more... you always re- thought there was a PR guy standing behind him. Right. Where, and don't get me wrong, I think Phil's great, and Phil will, you know, he, he tries, he'll, Phil will never get himself in trouble. You know what I mean? Like, it's always, yeah. it's it doesn't feel like a, exactly PR speaking, but at the same time, it's it's cautioned. Well, Mikey Bear mm-hmm. just felt like you were talking to somebody. Like, he'd be like, no, exactly. that's not what that is. Like, this is da 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 da. Like, it's not, you know, it didn't feel feel as filtered, uh, and that will be missed for sure, because that, you know, the big problem with like Sony's, you know, PR team so far has been if it just always feels feel filtered, and Microsoft mm-hmm. has been doing a really good job of getting away from that, because even like Major Nelson at this point just feels completely filtered, like it's just like yeah, it's just rambling of a. <laughs> PR man like it's not it's not a real person it doesn't feel like anymore yeah, yeah it sucks man I, I I'm very curious to see who they put in his place I mean um so it looks like his title like, I'm looking at it here it says corporate vice president of Microsoft's gaming division across Xbox and PC mm-hmm. so that's a very broad position I guess um yeah. but yeah I guess he was the ones behind the whole uh what do you call it uh getting uh uh, this guy, so you mixer, uh, ninja, right? Was he behind one of those yeah. decisions? Yeah. All so right. that was a big one. Well, Mike, but yeah, man, we'll, we'll miss you, Mike. Mixer. But we will. Yeah. I'm definitely. I'm not unfollowing by any means. I'm. I'm curious <laughs> what, where he moves. Yeah. It's like, you know, he's an interesting person, and it's somebody I will continue to follow. Yeah, he's still a gamer too, so I'm I'm sure he'll still be trying to get like his gamer score up, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it'll be interesting because it's not like he only played Xbox. Let me see if I can. Anything, but it'll be interesting to see where, or like where he goes. Like if he'll kind of open up a little bit more about the industry now that mm-hmm. he's kind of well, depending on where he moves to now that he's out of it to a degree, not being a, specifically a PR headpiece anymore. Yeah. You think uh, well, the chances he'll go like to Sony or like Amazon? What do you think of the chances? Of those I think two? Am, I'm, I don't know. I don't think I think Apple would be a better thought. Hmm. Just because I know Apple is looking to with their arcade service uh, to boost that up, it would make sense to poach off of both Microsoft and Sony on that one. True. Amazon, I'm not. I mean, it's possible. Could be. I, Sony, I, I doubt it. I mean, I guess it's all fair game at the end of the day, but it's, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, I guess we'll find out in the next few weeks. It should be interesting. Maybe he'll announce it the same day as uh, XO19. <laughs> yeah. That'd be bad timing, but, you know. 
I'm going to Sony, guys. <laughs> XO19. <laughs> yeah, that'd be wild. <laughs> Me and Mark are going to be BFFs. That's right. All yeah. right. Before we go, <laughs> it's just silly. Uh, mm. That's all the news I really had to cover this week. Unless you had anything else you want to hit on before we move on. Good, sir. Uh, let me take a look. Uh, uh, I mean, a few games came out this week. Uh, uh, Indivisible came out. It was a long time in, uh, in uh, we call it, uh, Kickstarter. It's like an action RPG, which is cool. Uh, Try and Trilogy came out this week, uh, which is it's, uh, it's weird because it was on PlayStation for the longest time, and then uh, it wasn't so recently that they ported all those games over to the Xbox. And the original Try and Two was on on 360, so it was odd that they just omitted um, the Xbox until now. But you know, I'm glad it's on there, so that's that's cool. So it's, it's a side scrolling, uh, like yeah, it's a side scrolling action game. It was pretty cool. Adventure, I guess you want to call it. Uh, what else came out? Uh, Grid came out. Uh, ukulele, then let me see. Yeah, yeah, ukulele and the Possible Air, which is a 2D version. Uh, like, well, like, like it's a new ukulele game, but it's in 2D, and apparently yeah. it's pretty good. Well, it's supposed to be the spiritual successor to Donkey Kong Country. Yeah, it's right there. That like, I, I'm kind of sold. I might buy this game tomorrow. I'm telling you, <laughs> I really will. Well, I think I'm gonna do it. I think I'm taking the plunge because I, I look. Tropical Freeze is a good game, but it doesn't play exactly like Donkey Kong Country. It feels, it feels like a version and not like the real thing. So if you can legally two feels like Donkey Kong Country, but I'm sold, and especially since it's yeah. pretty much at 4K 60 on the One X. Yeah, uh, that's, that's it's great. Tempting. I mean, it, yeah, it's tempting. Is it, yeah, it's running on um. Unity, right? Yes. Sadly, it's only 1080p 60 on the Pro. Uh, wow. But, but the developer did say they're going to look at trying to fix it, but it's not something they can fix right now. Oh, or they Well, no. Let me rephrase that. It's not something they know they can fix yet. So it's, huh. yeah. We'll Very see. interesting. I guess the one that was like, there would have been like a 4K title on there too, because it's not, it doesn't seem very demanding. You wouldn't but. think, yeah, but yeah, they said they, it's right now, it's not possible. They're not sure if they're able to fix that yet. Hmm. Yeah, I guess so. That's one reason to get the next, I guess, if you want that high res. Uh, but yeah, it's cool because like the first ukulele is more of a banjo kazooie kind of spiritual successor, and then this one is more of a Donkey Kong. So I wonder what they're going to do with the, the next one. Like, what kind of rare ish. <laughs> yeah. <Pinata. laughs> yeah that'd be funny <laughs> um there's also a, an rpg that came out that i heard is, is pretty good uh it's called Le, legrand legacy or legrand mm -hmm. um it's kind of like a final fantasy like of, of you know like the playstation final fantasy games similar to that so i feel like a kind of jrpg is uh if you could, if you could talk if you want like a jrpg ish kind of uh RPG, I think that might be up your alley. It's like 16 bucks. It's on sale mm -hmm. for like five bucks off, so that's not too bad. And uh, Ghostbusters video game also came out to 30 bucks, which is also a bad compat if you had it already. But this one has uh, updated visuals and stuff like that. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much. I mean, this is Ghost Recon Breakpoint, but I, I don't, I'm not really into that game. I, mean, I, I liked Wildlands, but. These Ubisoft games are kind of all kind of blending in. Yeah, it seems to be <laughs> reviewing kind of low. I see a lot of you know user reviews saying that they really like it, but mm -hmm. it's yeah. The, I don't know. I, I'd probably wait for that one to go on sale. Yeah, it's a bit of a mixed bag. I think it's uh, online only too. I don't, I don't think it's uh, yeah. uh, available offline. <clears throat> but yeah, those are the releases. Uh, I mean, besides you know, Destiny 2 going free to play, which was, I think that was like last week or something. Was it this week or last week? I think it was last week. Last week, yeah. Yeah. Um, Code Vein came out last week, I think, too, but I, I don't see too many people <laughs> playing that, to be honest with you. Um, I guess everybody's waiting for a sale on that one because that, that's like one of those wait for a sale games. It's almost a Game Pass game, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, I wouldn't be surprised. You know, they're paying, they're giving Cap. Uh, Microsoft's getting uh, Bandai Namco the sweet money for the Jump Force and 
Yeah. All that stuff. So that's All pretty right. cool. Is there uh, anything else we want to cover before we move on to what we've been playing? Uh, let's see. Um, I don't, I don't think so. I, I, don't, I, think, I don't recall. I mean, do you want to talk about the PS5 stuff? Uh, yeah, I guess if you want to, you know, in relation to how Scarlet might be. I mean, the specs look very similar. I don't see a whole lot of difference yet. Yeah. Um, they might be omitting a few details here and there, but so uh, so far it's matching up so pretty well. Yeah, like it looks like they're gonna have rumble tr controller or triggers, so it's yeah. awesome because that just means more games will support it, if not all games mm -hmm. going into next gen. You know, it's just really cool because mm -hmm. it's it's something that really does make a difference on like racing games and everything else. Uh, well, I would do. I do think if they're gonna do that, I think they might have to revise that design. If if because uh, I don't see the PS4 controller working with that type of feature. Like I don't know. I feel like they it, said it's, it's gonna a little... have a larger battery and that to power those features. Hmm. <clears throat> That's good. I mean, yeah. yeah. Like I mean, the only thing I hated about the PS4 controller is the start button is way too cramped. It's like it's so jammed in there <laughs> that yeah. This is not very well thought out. Hopefully, this gives this gives um, Xbox the share button, like you know, the kind of trade uh, features, you know, like uh, you know, PlayStation gets the the rumble triggers and all that, the haptic yeah. feedback, and then we get like a share button and maybe some, maybe an extra little thing because I, I think they're definitely going to add a little bit more functionality to the Scarlet controller. I think they have to. I think they might add a microphone to the controller, just possibly, just. Because yeah. Sony has one, maybe a speaker. I don't know. Like maybe we'll see. It's an interesting little gimmick. I mean, it's it, they they use it well for for certain games because it's kind of weirds you out when you hear it. Like, whoa, where does this come from? Like, don't get me wrong. I'm kind of not into those features, but like having the gimmick there is kind of a convenient way of doing it. Uh, mm -hmm. With the next X, well, with the the Elite Two having an internal battery, I imagine that Microsoft's gonna switch the regular xbox scarlet controller to an internal uh, yeah we'll see i mean i that kind of sucks but because you know it, it makes the controllers kind of very uh tied to the this is this is what you say as long as they're USB C and they all have fast charging then i i, I will be okay with it but if they do not do those things then it's a sh just a sham again. It's just fucking over people. But yeah. If you got USB C and you are going to allow me to use my. Well, with Microsoft, we know that they're going to support the old controllers on the new system. So, depending if you really. Like, depending on how different the next Xbox controller is, I mean, you might just want to stick with your Xbox One controllers and just use those with your double A's. Yeah, they are Chargers. forward compatible. Yeah. So that's so. good. I mean, I hope they also like maybe have solution to like the, the battery. Like you can, they have like uh, maybe uh, maybe you can send it in, and then they'll have like a way to you know swap it out for you and for you know a small fee or whatever. Yeah, it does nice. get like yeah. yeah. See, it would be a smarter design that way. That way you don't have to like. Or um, uh, if the battery pack can ugh, battery pack can still snap out of it somehow, right? Just for you to replace it without having to like really rip apart a controller. Exactly. Yeah, I think that would be smart. Maybe, maybe Sony will have something like that too. Because, but you know, I think they're in the business of selling more controllers, so yeah. <laughs> it'd be hard to see that happen. We'll see. Yep. All right. Uh, I think that's gonna. I don't really want to get too down the rep hole and that stuff because we. It's. It's not a lot there to be honest. It's just like. It might be a GPU that's one point two, now one point eight, now two gigahertz and power. Like we don't really know what any of that shit means so we gotta wait till later this year apparently um we might get some scarlet news at xo19 i would imagine um mm -hmm. but that yeah that's it's all pretty much six like eight months out you know eight 12 months out we'll we'll know everything essentially what's going on yeah, with these machines i think the only surprise was uh the fact that i think uh people weren't expecting it to have hardware accelerated ray tracing so it looks like it was confirmed that it does do hardware uh ray tracing uh because yeah. i think that they were saying it was going to be software based before but 
Well, they thought that this. Yeah. They thought the <clears throat> GPU was just going to use like CU units to do ray tracing instead of having a specific piece of uh, hardware in there to take it right. to task. That way, it wouldn't bog down the system. Uh, yeah. And so, hopefully, you know, it, it's nice and powerful because honestly, what these consoles are pushing. Uh, both Xbox and PlayStation are going to kind of set the standard for even PC ray tracing. Like it, it put it lays the floor for at least the bottom level of ray tracing. Mm. So if Microsoft and Sony can push this, you know, maybe the Xbox Scarlet X will have you know a bigger ray tracing you know allotment. You know, maybe a bigger chip or something in there. So yeah, Here's yeah, a... I was wondering. Yeah, I agree. I was wondering like how. From... Ray tracing, it'll probably be just a limited effect for certain like, parts of the game. It won't be like full bore, like crazy ray tracing, but it'll just utilize it to just uh, make use of you know the, the hardware, yeah, where it can, you know, when it has over it has uh, enough uh, overhead to do so. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, that's it for news for this week. Uh, uh... We're not really prepared for a DC character or Marvel character. <laughs> uh, I can do it for next week if you want. If, yeah, if it's we'll do it next week. I would, you know, maybe we should give a homework assignment out. <laughs> yeah. If you want like a good starter comic, and we'll talk about it next week, read Kingdom Come because you can pretty much get it everywhere. It's a good read. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful comic. Uh, but it's a Justice League comic. I would recommend it. Read some Kingdom Come. You probably get it for about ten bucks, ten fifteen bucks, at your local comic shop. And we will go into Kingdom Come next week. We'll do you, that. Might be something we do, like a little like a book club, essentially for comics. If you're willing to go down that rabbit hole with me, Will. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've read it. Pretty dense. Uh, yeah, it's a it's an excellent like uh, book or yeah, I mean whatever you want to call it, series book. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but uh, yeah, definitely worth checking out. Let's see if I can track down a copy and reread it. All right. Well, let me tell you. Well, I became pirate legend being level twelve or ten. Your your alarm's messing with me now. I'm so nervous. For like under <laughs> schedule, yes. uh, but the yeah, uh, I ended up binging my Devil's Roar Athena is just over and over and over again. Uh, and from because it was it, it takes 12 uh, 12 mission 12 Athena chests to go from 9 to 10 in Sea of Thieves. So, and each Athena mission takes from like 40 to 50 minutes to uh, to do, and the yeah, it was a it was a grueling process, but a very enjoyable one. Like yeah, uh, it's a long, yeah, it's a long time <laughs> for yeah. questing. Yeah, but I, I finally hit it. I'm happy to say I hit it. I got my cool uh, emblem for the front of the boat. Figurehead is really awesome. It's a it's like this reaper with the lantern in the front of his hand. It's really cool looking. Uh, yeah, that's and I got a hat. I got a hat, sir. And oh, this nice. is what we're going to be rocking when I got to get another half a million coin to uh, buy the sails to put on the boat, and then I'll have all the ghost stuff. Nice. Yeah, so that is the next big push in my uh, Sea of Thieves adventure. <laughs> yeah. That has a lot of achievements to write the game. Yes, it does. At this point, and they've been adding so much content to it, and there's just so much stuff to do now. Like, it's ridiculous. It's hard to keep up with all of it. Yeah, there's like so many the achievements are like really hard sometimes. Like, it's very. Some of them are kind of obtuse, and some of it is like easy. Yeah, it's, it's, it's quite something. All right. I mean, I'm going to be honest. I played a lot of that. I ended up playing Gears 5, or not. I played Gears 5 and the Halo 5 with it's crazy that those games are unequal <laughs> yeah, uh, right. numbers uh, with Steph the other night it was a lot of fun we oh, ended nice. up, uh, yeah Halo 5 is just man that game feels so good when you're moving like it, I th- they, they they knocked the controls out of the park 
Like mm-hmm. I, I feel that to me is what a Halo should feel like. Like you have Halo One, it's up there. It's my fa- one of my favorite shooters of all time. And then five oh. is right next to it. Like it just feel like I've never felt like it's the game's fault. Like oh fuck you fucked me. Like it's always like mm-hmm. man I could have done that better. And yeah. if anything, it's it's somewhere like an elite controller really does help because that extra the tiny extra bit of precision you might get from it would be noticeable when your game controls that well yeah you know it's almost up there with a platformer in a lot of ways like a good feeling platformer. yeah yeah i think the 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 lead controller is pretty much uh built for this type of game it's uh i think most people use them like uh if they're like into like hard core competitive yeah I mean, I'm st- I'm still more of a just regular controller guy, but it, it plays just as well on there. It's just like you know, you don't oh, have no, yeah. but like paddles, I said, just but... when you get to the, if you're like super hardcore competitive, the little bit of extra precision will help. Yeah, um, absolutely. Some it's finely tuned like this. I feel like Gears Five is more, and don't get me because it's a Nasher fest. You're not aiming. You're not you know. You're just kind of like point and shoot like in this general vicinity. Nasher wins. Like, yeah. it's not yeah. you're not really looking for that super precise headshot like you are in halo 5 on a controller and it just yeah, yeah it's just different it's a different take yeah i feel like i use a lot of uh hip fire too for uh for gears like for the yeah. shotgun <clears throat> there's nothing wrong with that i just yeah no. it's more of a they're two di- v- vastly different types of games yeah, although I do remember seeing like uh, there's a video or like a GIF of, of them showing that the hitboxes were pretty off in this one, so they have to fix that. Yeah. <clears throat> so hopefully they'll get that back Adjusted. up to speed. Yeah. yeah, exactly. All right, I'm gonna be honest. That's it, sir. That's all I got. That's what I played. <laughs> Just the thieves. I played Gears and Halo Two. Oh, Gears! Right, that's right, that's right. Yeah, it's a good, that's a good trifecta there. I'm trying to remember if I played anything else. I, re- uh, I'll be honest. I re- I didn't play more Ori on my Switch yet. I want to finish that up. Um, mm. um, there's not like a game specifically other than Ukulele. Just once they said fucking Donkey Kong Country successor, I was like, I kind of have to have this game now. Uh, <laughs> But other than that, yeah, there's not there's not a big title that I'm. Other than the Outer Worlds, I guess. Yeah, that's coming soon. Yeah. And you know that that's it. Yeah, it's a pretty good a uh, pretty good haul there of games you play. Um, yes, <clears throat> yeah, so I, I've been playing. Uh, let's see here, scrolling through my achievement list. So yeah, I played a little bit of Gears Five, a little bit of Escape. Uh, played a little bit of Assassin's Creed Origins. Chill, still chipping away at that one. Uh, played some Tekken 7 this week. Because it had some updates. I wasn't sure what they were. I think they were like maybe uh, just adjustments. Uh, but yeah, Tekken 7 is still fun. It sucks it's still at 720p. I was kind of hoping it would be <laughs> updated to 4K, but it probably won't be happening anytime soon. Um, uh, Dead or Alive 6 Core Fighters, because uh, I'm still waiting for a sale on that one again. Cause, but it's, it's, it's a really good game. It's a, it's a fun fighter. Very simple, but it also has its own nuances that make it a little more complex in certain ways. I've always um, liked DOA. It's it's a good yeah. fighter. I just I wish they would have got the uh, resolution mode up to snuff. Yeah, I mean, it looks it looks very clean, actually very. But I I feel like it's one of those games that'll um, just perform way better on the Scarlet. So yeah, it, it's it's pretty much Scarlet ready with that mode. <clears throat> um, but yeah, very fun fighter. It's it's, it's it has a big history with Xbox. It's, it was one of like I think it didn't they, they no it was Dreamcast they debuted on. DO3. Yeah. No, it came out on Dreamcast. Um, yeah. And when Dreamcast died, like they kind of redid the whole thing for Xbox, and it was right. fairly exclusive for Xbox for a while. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and yeah, they have even their own like exclusive characters from like Halo. Yeah. <clears throat> so that was cool. Yeah, definitely you know, a fun fighter. Uh play a little bit of Dirt Rally 2.0, which is on Game Pass. Uh, so between that and Gears 5, still getting some value out of Game Pass, which is cool. 
<clears throat> um, world, sir. You're gonna have a whole RPG to play soon. <laughs> I know that's gonna be uh, very good. Yeah, that and uh, well, uh, uh, did we talk about the Game Pass games that we got this week? Oh, I don't think so. Was, yeah, it was like uh, Daisy, uh, Daisy, right? Daisy. Um, so I just want. There's a few other I didn't games. Know we got Daisy. To be honest, that's awesome. It's a game I've I've like contemplated buying a lot. <laughs> really, yeah. honestly, I know it sounds stupid, but it really is. It's like, <laughs> uh, I don't know if I want to buy it on console. Da 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 da. And then you know, Game Pass, awesome. I'll play it. Yeah, it's definitely you know make it worthwhile. Um, let's see, now I gotta look it up. But uh, yeah, the, the games I've been playing are pretty much those plus PUBG, but. I've been taking a little bit of a slight bit of a break on that because I've been watching uh, some TV shows and stuff like yeah. that. So, um, yeah, let me, let me look up to see what the Game Pass games are before it yeah. kills me. I'm going to go on a rant real quick about the Flash uh, TV show. <laughs> the new season's uh, out already? Yes, new season started. And uh, this dude, some you know, he's created black holes or whatever. He's not doing it on purpose, but, you know, spoilers. Anyway, so you got this black hole, right? And this 200-pound man is, like, almost floating towards this black hole. Then you have Iris standing there, probably mm-hmm. 120 pounds soaking wet, maybe, holding the guy's hand as he starts to float, not bracing herself, just standing there as the black hole almost consumes this guy. And it's like, what? Like, does she have to be that much of a hero? Like, she has no superpower, but somehow she has like superman strength to just stand there in front of a black hole and hold somebody else up that weighs at least twice her weight to stop being from sucked in like (laughs) it's just too cringy too cringy like i'm not saying she has to be a fucking retard a retard or something i'm just saying like make her realistic like make her a smart person put it this way people love lex luther lex luther has no power he's just smart he outsmarts superman all the fucking time it's the whole point yes he has technology but he's a smart guy intelligence is not a bad thing she doesn't have to have some stupid power oh honestly it just made me go they need to end the show like this this needs to end like this is yeah it y'all, does feel y'all like have it's... ran the gauntlet y- you've done it it's time to end the flash like the, if this <laughs> is where we're at where iris with no powers is just dude the, the 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 dialogue was awful like through the whole show this is why we do it like yes we're superheroes <laughs> that is just like that kind of dialogue it's like come on y'all can do better. yeah y'all can uh, do better. i agree yeah, I feel like the the characters have matured past a certain point that they don't really need to be making more. I mean, I you always can. You know, I think I'm most excited about is the uh, Crisis on Infinite Earth thing, which yeah, is yeah, I'm, I'm excited for that. Like that's yeah. gonna be fun. Yeah, but that's because it's gonna be one story for like four episodes, which will be awesome. Yeah, it would but suck because... if that like crossover to like a million episodes. I hate when they do that. Yeah. Like they need to, they need to commit to doing like just single story arcs, kind of like the Marvel Netflix shows. Yeah, and not trying to have a villain of the week, because if you have a villain of the week, that means every character has to have a spotlight for every fucking week with the villain. Mm-hmm. You got to have this un like impossible story arc of like these characters developing every week, or you just fall into the same. Well, Barry's gonna be fucking emo again for a week. Iris is going to be a hypocrite. <laughs> Cisco's just going to be Cisco until they completely destroy his character. <laughs> like no, no, nobody, nobody cares. Like nobody cares. Yeah, I mean, they, they could remedy this by just making better episodes. But yeah, I don't. Know, I guess I feel like they're running out of like ideas and just kind of coasting at this point. Yeah. I mean, at least the um, Arrow is ending its show, you know? Yeah, that one has... It's been on for a long time, so... I, I, I could see why they do that. Yeah. 
I'm sorry. This is my DC rant. I, it just like it, it bugged me. I thought it was a terrible <laughs> first episode to come back on. Like it's... he has a new costume, right? Like the newer kind of design on it. I, I, yeah, it looked weird. Oh, yeah. I don't know why they don't give him the gold boots. Like it's weird. At this it's... point, just do it. Like fuck it. Yeah. Just put them on. Yeah, it's, it's like, like so many revisions, but they don't really go all the way. Like they they were talking about how there's a new Godspeed, but they've caught four Godspeeds in the last. <laughs> season and all of them have a modem voice or some shit i don't know like it's just like come on you you you, you ran out of ideas pun intended <laughs> <laughs> yeah pretty much like, um just, and don't get me wrong there's plenty of flash stories in the dc universe that you could go to but let, let's not go down that well let's just uh just keep doing the same arc over and over yeah, well, I, I this, yeah, I think I think at this point it's it's a lot more um, viable to give Wally the the Flash identity, like you know they they kind of somewhat did that, but they didn't go all the way. So with the Crisis thing, they can pretty much like just pass the mantle to Wally now and then. Well, they you know, but they put later. him on League of Legends, which honestly was a good choice because he ended up actually being very good on that show. Uh, but well, we'll see. Oh, you said League of Legends, <laughs> or not League of Legends? Uh, uh, Legends of Tomorrow. Legends of Tomorrow. That's right. Yeah, it, it, uh, it's very easy to mix them though. <laughs> yeah. It'd be funny if you you could play them in League of Legends. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like they kind of just stole that character from them because <laughs> they needed more interesting characters, so they just took him from there and. Well, they uh, threw all the interesting characters they had at that show. It was just like yeah. uh, Constantine, uh, a speedster. Yeah, Wally. That works. Just like. <laughs> We will make this show work. <laughs> yeah, it's a weird show because it's like it, it feels like it should be more of a Booster Gold show instead of like. A... You know what? That's totally what who they need to add in there is Booster yeah. Gold. Yeah, like you could totally make that a Booster Gold show. Like totally, I'd be into it. I would. Yeah, because the time yeah, travel a... shit would all work. Like it, it, it just works. Yeah, because doesn't have a uh, what's his name? Rip the Time Hunter or some of like that. What's his yeah. name? Yeah, I don't know if I'm getting the name right, but uh, yeah, because he was pretty much a, a big deal too with a uh, with Booster in, in uh, one of the comics. I think it was the Fifty Two series book. Mm. <clears throat> yeah, it's pretty much like Booster Gold series without Booster Gold, which is interesting. Um, but yeah, I think they. I mean, they should just give take Wally back from that show and then just put him in the, the Flash and have him carry the show until you bring Barry back. You know, give him like a vacation or something. <laughs> Yeah, a long vacation, but uh, yeah. Well, they so, should have done it. They should have done it like last year, and I know they wanted to do Barry's daughter and that whole arc yeah. or whatever. But they should, yeah, they should have. If Infinite Crisis was next season, mm-hmm. you could have totally took this season off for Barry, and just made it about Wally. Yeah, and then he could have came back for Infinite Crisis. Or yeah, have or, or, him die in Infinite Crisis. Yeah, that's out. what I was thinking. Yeah, because yeah, it follows pretty much the comics that way. Yeah. But it's hard to kill off like the Arrow and Barry at the same time. Yeah. And, and I like Barry, too. Like I think he's... Besides maybe the, the CBS TV show that came, aired in the 90s, like a flat Barry Allen, I think this is one of my favorite incarnations of Barry Allen. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it would suck to have him like, go. But yeah, uh, yeah. Oh, so like, let me go back to sorry the Game Pass games. Yeah. Um, so I think we went over them last week, but I think so they added just uh, Missy. So the Outer Worlds, of course, and there. And uh, sorry, I had the wrong one. It was World of War Z and Daisy. But uh, oh, yeah, yeah. We'll, but we'll anyway, World War Z. Z. I will say yeah. I do own that, and I really do enjoy it. We should play World War Z because I never nice. had friends to play with because nobody else bought the game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah is that like a survival like PUBG it's Left 4 Dead game? it's just oh, Left, Left 4 Dead. Dead it's completely rips off Left 4 Dead it's uh, good really. but it's a it is a rip off of Left 4 Dead if, if, if I'm not any more clear it ripped off Left 4 Dead alright well <laughs> <laughs> I gotcha it's uh, but yeah no problem yeah so I think that's pretty much it for the what we've been playing. That's all. That's all right. Uh, did you see the Joker yet? 
No, man. I wanted to see it, but I've been kind of poor this week, so I have to wait until most likely. He goes out with a smile. No, I don't know. How do I? (laughs) (laughs) I don't want to spoil it, so we won't talk about it. Maybe next week. (laughs) Everybody dies in Joker, okay? Everybody. (laughs) Joker, Batman, all of them. Like, Superman shows up with a lunch tray with Shazam. His whole family dies. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, we, we had to line up a bunch of spoiler casts. Like, we had to do the Gears one with Steph and then yeah. and Eric, and then uh, maybe a Joker one once everybody sees that. Um, but I did see The Boys, though. I finished that out. Um, and for like between two days, because I, I just pretty much binged it. Uh, excellent show, man. It's really good. Uh, very dark. Yeah, very it's dark. Oh, I heard. Yeah, I heard the comics a lot more brutal, but that's, you know, Garth Ennis. So he, mm-hmm. that's typical Garth Ennis. But. I, when I see, it looks like I heard the uh, the show elaborates and makes him more, less cartoonish violence. And I mean, there's still violence there, but it's not. The characters are more fleshed out, and yeah. I heard they're more uh, well realized. So, uh, yeah, it's also awesome show, man. I can't wait for season two. Uh, it's, yeah, it's an awesome kind of. Yeah, it's almost like a like an injustice. <laughs> it's kind of. Yeah, there. to my understanding, he just hate he when he see, he saw Superman and the whole Justice League. He's like, just I hate that. And then he made a show about <laughs> or a comic. I'm sorry, yeah, a comic. comic about, yeah, yeah, just fuck them. Let's make it let's show what they would really be like. Let's let's be honest about these characters, and they just be brutal fucks. And that's what it's really what that show is. Yeah, it's, it's like a like a more cynical Watchmen esque type of. Yeah. Thing except it, there's like an opposing human element, which was interesting. Uh, kind of like the characters are all kind of like Batman. They're, they're just trying to find how to defeat these these bad heroes or whatever you want to call them. I mean, they're essentially villains, meta but... humans or whatever you want. Yeah. Yeah, they all have just different you know, shades of gray and yeah. stuff like that. Uh. I don't want to get yeah. too far because it is definitely it's still our newer show. It's definitely yeah. definitely spoilery. Uh, right, I would definitely recommend it. I like this. I think I've said it before. It's very very dark. Uh, would not let a kid anywhere near this fucking show. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> uh, this is like a twenty one plus show. Okay, like this is uh, it is up there. Yeah, I mean it's clearly they're you know Justice League analogs. They're not like you know Avengers analogs or anything. They're just yeah. they're very clearly Justice League. <clears throat> I'll have to say the uh Well, I think uh, how they explained it is more mutiny than Yeah. in some ways. But it's yeah, it's he kind of takes a kick at all superheroes. But yeah, the, <laughs> the Superman is kind of the number one like punching bag at that show. Like it's <laughs> him and the Flash, like it's just like yeah, yeah. you two motherfuckers, like you You'd be pieces of shit for sure. <laughs> There's just no way. <laughs> like if, if Superman didn't have the Clark family. <laughs> yeah, and out of the way, it makes or you appreciate the Clark, the Kent family. Oh, shit. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Like, yeah. Actually, like uh, like Squadron Supreme, Supreme Power, Supreme Power. Actually, it's very similar to Supreme Power. Actually, too. Yeah. Um, that's a. It's like a Marvel's take on the Justice League, but like where they're like more uh, morally gray and stuff like that. Uh, but yeah. Uh, yeah, it makes me kind of appreciate like the Justice League actually, because like you, you can see how bad these people can turn out. Uh, when they're morally corrupt, stuff like that. So it just gives you another appreciation for like you know the goody two shoes <laughs> versions versions and stuff like that. Yeah, <clears throat> which is cool. The more virtuous. All right. Is there anything else we wanted to hit on before we end the show this week? Uh well we got the XO nineteen coming up uh you, we, were you are you excited for it or I am I mean they said they're gonna have some unannounced games I'm curious what those will be uh hopefully we'll get to see some Sea of Thieves I want to see an expansion for Sea of Thieves to see is honestly like if they don't show anything I think that just means if we don't see anything for Sea of Thieves it means they're winding down production like completely mm-hmm. on it yeah. Um, no. Which, you know, it would be a little disappointing, but at the same time, it's had a good life as a game. Like, it's added a ton of content. I don't want to see it wind down. I think they could definitely turn it into more of a platform than anything if they could wind yeah. it up, you know? Because it's still I think a they're going to. big Game Pass game. It's one of their top Game Pass games, and it's one of the top. It's still being streamed a lot. People 
watch that game a ton. So yeah, I think now that they have a bigger team, they, I think they're gonna be more. Uh, they're gonna do concentrate more on, on bigger like expansions, like maybe like because there's still a lot to go for that game. They, they, I mean, we, at this point, we still have skeleton enemies. There's no like. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, I know they're uh, adding. You know, like, they it let it slip. They're adding fire to the game, which should be interesting. Oh, fire! And, oh, and like in what way? The element, like so your ship could burn. So oh, that could be an interesting. interesting take, yeah. Uh, hmm. Yeah, I mean, plus more more enemy types. I mean, there's still a lot more to. Do. I would imagine they'll keep focusing on <clears throat> um, expansion packs. I, I know there were doing that little you know that how they were trading off teams and adding content packs like per like every like couple months yes um and they've so, been off of that for a couple months now so it'd be interesting to see what they've been working on because it's more like a a build up hopefully to something new yeah i figure they're yeah exactly i figure they're maybe they combine the team it's uh just making a bigger expansion instead of just doing like smaller ones which I would um, want them to go back to that too, like if they're going to continue, like make this one giant thing and then break back up to three teams and do three more or three or four more smaller mm-hmm. expansions on top and just keep building the way they have. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I I would expect you know if that was a XO nineteen uh, announcement, that, that that seems like a pretty logical thing to expect if they would put yeah. that there. But if there is no XO nineteen stuff, I, I'd be I'd be surprised to be honest. I don't think we'll see Rare's new game. I know they're working on something else, but like we'll, mm. we'll, we'll see. Hopefully, see some Sea of Thieves, but who knows? You, what are you yeah. expecting? Anything? I don't know. It's, a, it's so hard to say at this point because, like, I, I think they want to. They're gonna want to make it way better than last year's because last year's was a huge Game Pass commercial. I mean, and plus they also had the two big announcements with the studios. Um, yeah. So that kind of yeah. I mean, I felt like that capped off that that particular conference, but it was still kind of mediocre. Um, so I think they're going to try to get in a few more good announcements in here. Uh, maybe uh, some more previews to their, uh, maybe hopefully Gears Tactics. I mean, it's hard to say though at this point, but it would be nice to see that game again. I mean, it, it was shown last year, so there has to be some sort of update to that. Uh, I also I don't think we'll see a, an acquisition story on uh, on it at all either. Like I don't think you'll see that at XO nineteen. I think yeah. you will see it at next E three though. Hmm. And possible. I think it won't be European. I think it'll be two Japanese studios that they end up buying. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, uh, XO is. I mean, that makes yeah. the most sense. Just it's kind of the market unless they're going to get into sports games which i doubt hmm. yeah we'll see i mean i i think the last year's kind of set a, a bit of precedent with i mean as far as e3 and that one for mm-hmm. studio acquisitions but you know like you said it might they might be just slowing down and so it's pacing a little bit better oh well, no that's what I'm like it would make more sense going into like the scarlet launch and be like look we have also bought like pulling this out my ass capcom like this is how we're gonna support the you know the japanese side of xbox like we're gonna yeah. get a large japanese publisher like that would make more sense to me than them buying another western developer yeah japanese will work really well for me uh besides I me mean, i think the only other studio i'm thinking right now and i think a lot of people are thinking of too is a, a sobo studios who are doing the yeah. flight simulator <clears throat> but it's hard to say because you know apparently they're a huge studio and they're in france so and they have a lot of deals with the focus home interactive not that that would prevent them from doing an acquisition because it has a bunch of these studios so yeah. right yeah. yeah i guess it depends on how deep the you know the contracts are for those type of deals but uh, yeah, besides that studio, I think Japanese acquisitions were, would be pretty awesome. i will be definitely fill in that last kind of hole there that they have for as far as just different types of studios. All right. Uh, well, yeah. that's that's our guesstimations. What's your <laughs> guesstimations? Please write us in at mails at it. Mail at xboxuncut.com. Not mails. It's, uh, it's going to be a weird, it's going to be, you get weird replies back. But mail at xboxuncut.com. 
we will be back next week. We appreciate everybody for tuning in. Please come watch us live on Mixer. And you can check us for the replay on YouTube. Uh, but we appreciate everybody for tuning in. We want everybody to be safe and productive and have an awesome day. And we'll see you next week. Later, guys. See you all later. Peace out. Later.